Hi there. Welcome again in the SSIS course, step by step from scratch. And we have already completed our source to destination package where we are reading the data from CSV input file and we are loading the data to our SQL Server database. So in our last video, what we have done is we have read our data from this source file, which is our CSV file, comma separated, and we have loaded our data using this package, which is CSV input file to ADO.NET connection in our database, which is this data called SQL Server here. So now in this video, we're going to add one transformation and see how this transformation can affect this package. So instead of doing directly in inputting the data or importing the data from source to destination, we will add a, a transformation step here. So let's in order to do that, let's first delete this. And uh, once you delete it, it is showing a cross sign. So it is saying there's no mapping available and we'll do that. We'll come to that later. However, first let's check what transformation we are going to do. So in our database, if you see like it is first name and last name. So in the transformation, what we're going to do, we're going to create a new column here, a new column called name. And in this name column, we will combine, we will concatenate these two name and call it a combined name. So let's first our uh, design our database or alter our database first, drop and create and add one more column here. So it's just generating a script to uh, create our new database. So what it will do, like if it is already exists, it will drop my table and create a new table. So I'll create a new name call uh, instead of first name, last name, I'll call it employee name uh, name. Then I have to give a data type for it. So since it was 50 50 where care for first name and last name, both I'll assign it as a hundred and I'll mark it as a null. If it's not available, that's okay. And I'll execute this. So what it will do, like it will drop my table and now it will successfully uh, add that column in this, in my employee table. So now let's see it, select star from employee. And if I click this one, I can see like employee name column is available now. So now let's do the transformation on top of our SSIS package and populate this employee name table. So right now we don't have any data here. And while adding the data in this table, we will also do a transformation and I'll show you how to do that. So let's go back to our canvas IDE of SSIS. And here, what I'm going to do is like, I'm going to take one transformation from here, which is called derived column. So I'll take this derived column. We have to add the data in the derived column. So before uh, doing any transformation, first this derived column should have a source. So let's connect a source. Now right click and edit. So here you can see like we have these options available. ID, first name, last name, address, phone number and email. We have six fields and what we need to do is like we need to create a new column. So we will rename a new column as let's say EMP name. It's not necessary that you need the same name what you have in a database. You can do, uh, write any name. Uh, while mapping the data, mapping the fields from the source to destination, you can just map it manually if it is not taking automatically. Automatically, it is required because most often if you work in uh, large databases, uh, you do not prefer to map it manually and you want to keep it very consistent with the database. So that's a good practice. However, if you don't want, do not want to do that, you have a very small database, that's perfectly fine with you. So uh, in the option we have seen, like we have this add as new column here. We can replace any of the column also. However, do not try to replace a primary key because that is not allowed. So what we are going to do is like, we are going to create a new column, add as a new column. And in the expression, we are going, are going to concatenate it. That's what we are going to transform. This is called the transformation we are doing. So what the transformation we are doing is like, we are taking the first name, then we are adding a space, and then we are adding the last name. So why I'm doing plus? Plus is basically used for concatenate for strings. So once we want to concatenate this string, plus is used to do that, or you can use n percent. It's up to you. So we have uh, added it, the transformation. So what it will do, like it will create a new column. It will combine both the fields called first name and last name, separated by space, and inject in our data destination. The rest of the columns are data type, length, and precisions. So Let's go ahead with that. You can see the length is now 101. So we have taken 100. That's okay. That's not a problem. If there's an uh, length is getting exceeded, it will truncate the data automatically. So it will give you a warning. And if you fix it, it will be fine. If not, it will truncate the data. So you have to be very careful what the data you are taking from the source and the destination should have the exact same data type. Otherwise, it will truncate your data. 
all right so we have uh, completed our transformation now click on okay and now this uh, derived column let's make it uh, rename it to something else and let's say it, it should rename it uh, concatenate concatenate employee name okay and now let's connect this blue dot arrow to the destination and you can see like here it is giving us a warning that a new column in the employee name has been added to the external database and why it is doing so because we have not mapped that column so let's go and map that so this is already configured we do not have to worry about this and here you can see like it is automatically getting mapped however in the uh, employee name here we are not getting anything uh, a new column which we have created on destination we are not getting hit here so let's go back to the connection manager let's go back here uh, so what we're going to do is like we're going to refresh our database so that's what i'm going to do is i'm going to cancel this first from here am i going now i'm going to my connection manager edit my connection manager and i'll refresh my database so once i refresh my database i can see the new column which i have added as an employee name would start reflecting back here so that is the all agenda to add this employee name which is i have added recently to my destination if it is not coming up there don't worry you just have to refresh it and we'll see that so let's right click edit now we have refreshed it now let's go and check so we can see like still it is not popping up here so we have the employee name associated here which is our new column you can see like this is our uh, transformation uh, column which we have done the transformation but still there is no employee name which is reading from our database so there's a there's one more step which you can configure it you can just delete this step you can go back and take another ado.net connection now you can click the transformation from the ado.net click on edit this is already there again click on employee preview it now you can see this employee name is already coming up now let's go and map it so here you can see we have to do the remapping again that's why it is said like always keep the columns name in the source same as what we have in the destination so now here you can see the employee name is already populating up so now let's connect here phone number we are all set to go okay perfect so yeah this is done still it is a yellow mark is coming up which is saying truncation may occur in the inserting the data because employee name is 101 okay so what we're gonna do is like it is saying like employee name from the source after concatenating have the length of 101 but the data source in the date for our data table what we have in our database do not have that length so your data might truncate so let's go ahead and fix this issue we'll go back to our database script it will start generating that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just increase the data size for the employee name let's keep it 200 and let's execute it so once we have executed it and what we're gonna see is here we still have oh, I don't want to save it let me cancel that and I still don't have any data available so my table is ready now go let's go back here we do not have to worry about anything let's go and start and execute this step so i'll just click on start don't worry about the yellow sign that will automatically be taken care of it is just a warning so yeah it is still giving us the error of destination might fail so let's cancel this one and let's add another one execute it click on edit and then again we will read our database preview it all set let's go to mapping and we have to add it back first name then we have map last name address automatically mapped phone number and employee name and click on ok all set now the yellow sign has gone now we are all set to go ahead and execute our package so now let's click on start so once we click on start it will take some time to initiate this uh, execution it will read the data from the source file it will take the first name and last name and concatenate it and it will inject in our destination so here you can see like our transformations run successfully our source file is being read with 100 rows which is transferred to the concatenate employee names 
then this transformation has concatenated them first name and last name and then they have loaded into our database let's go back to our database and see whether this data has been uploaded successfully or not so let's go here let's execute it and perfect so this is what we want employee name you can see like it has already been populated with first name last name and concatenation so the thing the concept here is you do not have employee name in your source table here you can see like id first name last name address phone number and email you do not have the employee name here concatenated however you have used your ssis package to generate this transformation in between before loading the data into your destination and that is where the etl plays a huge impact when you load the data from a source into the destination in between if you want to do any type of transformation you can do that so this is a very good step and very important part when we talk about data integration when you talk about data manipulation and data loading so we have completed it successfully now and i have shown you how to design a etl package here you can see the package called package.dtsx it is the dtsx package because the extension called it for the ssis is dtsx and you can go ahead and rename it you can say it my first package and that's it and anytime if you want to you know uh, go ahead and schedule it or do any sort of operations you can just click it and you can also go ahead and uh, start set up as a start project so once you set up at a start project it will take this uh, package and execute this package from here because for example if you have multiple packages associated in the SSIS package project, let's say you have 10 packages, you want to make first any of the package as a start package from where you will want to start your execution. So you can right click and click on setup as a startup project or you can create that individual package from here. If you want to create a configuration file, you can go here in the tool and you can set up your configuration file as well. So in the configuration section, what is basically a configuration a configuration is an xml file where once you deploy the package on your server you do not have a flexibility to again and again go and change the package so the xml file is a con configuration file where your ssis package will read the input data and perform the uh, manipulation accordingly for example if you want to change the server name from local to any different server name you can go ahead and create the configuration package as well so this is all about how to do the ETL operations in SSIS package, read the data from source, do the transformation and load the data to destination table successfully. So that's all for this video. And I'll see you in the next video where we will discuss some more feature in SSIS. Thank you. Take care and goodbye.